speak love and respect. Much thanks, much praise. I am reeling with ideas at the moment. <clears throat> uh, Got to give thanks to all the lovely, lovely people in the Telegram. The list of names is just out of this world. Um, L.C. King, big up brother, blowing my mind. Took my uh, uh, Diction of Aries cipher and completed the cycle. He uh, plugged in one zero through nine in the missing link, the missing quarter of my Diction of Aries cipher. And I need to do an entire video just on that fact. Uh, uh, and the information that has been uh, uploading today is overwhelming. So I'm probably going to miss a few points, but I just got to, I got to put this into a video and share it with everybody because my cup is overfilling. Um, so yeah, L.C. King completed my cipher, the missing quadrant of the Addiction of Aries. Uh, the winter season was devoid of information, and so he slipped in uh, the numbers, and it completed the cycle to the 360 degrees. This is utterly profound beyond words. Ma'at. Math, Ma'at is in the underworld. She's in the subconscious. She is married to Thoth. Thoth is the letters. Thoth has the stylist. Thoth is on the surface level of the information. And underneath Thoth is his lovely, lovely wife, Ma'at. So putting the mathematical component into the cipher is absolutely bringing everything into completion. Uh, I can't even express how utterly perfect that is. So, Elsie King, you're just blowing my mind with that. Also, if you look closely, I'll, I'll splice it in. You can see that the degrees of the compass uh, reduce to a perfect representation of what Elsie King has brought forward. So, it is incredibly appropriate. I think we have a perfect match. We have a marriage a wedding of Thoth and Ma'at uh, coming full circle. So uh, I'll try to bring that forward. Uh, people, you're welcome to get a screenshot, you know, hold on to that cipher. It will probably serve many purposes going forward. Uh, so with that in mind, quite a few truths and revelations uh, have come to the surface. And big love to all my people in the Telegram group. Uh, uh, Sean Clark, uh, also Mario from Symbolic Studies. Uh, big love, man. We had a big brainstorm on what this all means. Well, you know, what L.C. King has brought uh, to the surface. And what we have discovered is that the number four and five, four and five, is located in an incredibly significant spot on the cipher. Four and five is right here. And I perceive four and five as a gateway of sorts, a crossing of a threshold. This is the symbol for Jupiter and Saturn. And the fact that we are in this location in the season, in the year right now, when I'm making this video, is absolutely blowing my lid. <laughs> it's blowing my mind that L.C. King opened the gates for us to perceive this underworld cipher, that we're in the uh, season of coins. This is the winter, the earth. We are down in the depths of our sub-unconscious in the winter time, and we are on the rise. We're turning this corner. We're turning the bend, and we're moving upward towards the spring. And the fact that the four and the five, representing Jupiter and Saturn, uh, is right here on this location is absolutely so profound to me because of current events that are happening in the mind's dream media. 
the mainstream media is the mind's dream. And uh, everybody is uh, somnambulating, sleepwalking. We are walking through a dream uh, in a beautiful way. And so the signs and the symbols of the heavens uh, re being reflected on earth and in the story that we're being told uh, through the media is absolutely blowing my mind, folks. I'm seeing a lot of in, uh, information indicating to me that the, the sky map is crucial to deciphering the information in the, uh, in the news, you know, the north, east, west, and south. Um, so a couple of those signs and symbols uh, are encoded deeply in the, uh, the, minor, the minor decans. There are 36 small, con smaller minor constellations uh, that are uh, put into their place in the heavens in relationship to the uh, constellations. So we are really getting into the fine minutia of this cipher. Um, it's so funny. I have a, sometimes I have words in other languages <laughs> that are even better. So like the word minutia in, uh, in Portuguese is bem meu gin, is the fine details. It's the, it's the, you know, it's the je ne sais quoi. <laughs> we are looking at the je ne sais quoi of this cipher. So, um, I want to point out, uh, everybody should look at the minor decans of the, uh, of the Zodiac. They are not very uniform, and I need to put this forward. Often, so often, I'm speaking in generalities, and you will see in, uh, in different uh, graphics of the minor decans, you will see some of these that I have listed, some of them are not even in the list. And some of them are two to three, sometimes even four spots uh, out of place. And so when you research the minor decans, just understand that you will probably find, you know, Uradnus in, in the place of Perseus or Perseus and Cetus switched. Triangulus and Cassiopeia sometimes get switched. Um, there are assorted... Um, translations of these relationships. So the order is very often uh, rearranged depending on who you talk to. And that is why this fine minutia, this bemeogia, the, the je ne sais quoi, is uh, subject to interpretation. And oftentimes we are speaking in generalities. However, you will find that they are generally very accurate. You will not find Uradnus over here in Boe, Bo, Bootes, and you won't find Bootes over here in Cetus. You will find them generally in their uh, in this location. So don't hold it against me if you go research the Deccans and they're not exactly the way I laid them out. Uh, this is very much a general relationship of where they belong in the sky because different cultures different strokes different folks so all that being said i really want to focus on where we are in time right now because there are archetypes and symbols of the heavens that are put in play on the grand chessboard on the planet earth in front of our very eyes right now uh, so while we're looking down at the mundane events uh, the archetypes of the heavens up above us are being cast into uh, into roles and in dynamics in a major way, and it's kind of blowing my mind how significant how significant the the stars are to the stories that we are always being told. So, if anybody missed my uh, my reading of uh, Perseus. And the story of that unconquerable sun, the soul Invictus. Um, maybe you go back and watch that. That was a fun series for me to do. I want to share the uh, book that I used for that reading with everybody. 
because I failed to cite my source on that. That was Mythology and You. And that is by Donna Rosenberg and Sorel Baker. Um, that's where that reading came from. And ever since I did that reading, I've been getting considerable downloads. I have so much more to say than I could ever put into any video. I think it is one of the most significant stories as it is the, you know, the grand play on the heavenly stage. Uh, giving us signs and symbols that will be used in stories uh, going forward. Uh, you know, very much relating to, you know, uh, Shakespeare and some of those paradigms that are used uh, over and over as the cycle of the circle unfurls throughout the year. So, uh, I want to point at Cygnus. A few days ago, uh, a lot of folks in the Telegram group and I we were focusing on the goose and the significance of the goose. I think Chance said he used the word geese in his uh, Scrabble. <laughs> and that is so amazing because Cygnus is the swan. It is the sign of the swan in the heavens. Uh, and I think of the swan as like the royal goose. You know, all the geese are mundane, but the swan is royalty. And uh, our conversation in the Telegram, a lot of you will remember this, Chris, big up brother, that conversation appears to have been divinely inspired because now I'm looking back at that time frame, that section of the sky, and I'm realizing that the Cygnus and the Swan absolutely corresponds to the great honking and the fact that the truckers are honking at... The mundane, they're screaming out uh, to, the, uh, to the masses, and that is a warning signal. Um, the goose is the alarm system of the pharaoh. The ancient pharaoh would keep a, uh, many flocks of geese uh, to protect the temple, and the geese would... Uh, tell people when there were uh, encroaching forces from afar. The geese could feel the vibration of a uh, marauding uh, cavalry. If there were a group of horses or a large body of people uh, preparing to invade, the geese would uh, tell the temple that something was coming way before the humans could perceive the danger. So the encroaching alarm of the great honking is telling us that a very significant event is about to happen and we are have been warned consider yourself warned and that is profound to me so profound because we are approaching a very great uh point of conflict in the signs and symbols of the heavens i believe we are dealing with if anybody watched my perseus story we are dealing with that moment of cutting the head off of the beast. This is right in the area where Perseus slayed Medusa. And he collected the head. He put the head in his pouch. And that decapitation uh, symbol is an archetype that carries through so many other stories. This plays into uh, Osiris versus Set. This plays into uh, Jesus versus John the Baptist. All of this Zeus, <laughs> Pegasus, um, all of these uh, stories correspond with this point of, uh, this conjunction point of the four to the five, being, that being Jupiter and Saturn. I'll try to bring some graphics forward for everybody to consider and ponder. Uh, but uh, I see four and five uh, as a bit of a Masonic tracing board. And these are the two pillars, Joachim and Boaz. If you think about the arrangement of the, uh, of the visible planets, the naked eye planets, uh, Jupiter and Saturn correspond with the uh, threshold. They are the most extreme, the furthest out of all the heavenly bodies in the context of the uh, visible naked eye planets. So we are looking at a threshold. Uh, if we were exiting the solar system, the furthest two 
bodies that we would see in the olden days would be the four and the five, representing this pillar uh, leaving the temple of the what we're told is the construct of the solar system. So I also need to point out that Pegasus, I believe, is represented in the, uh, the truckers and the protest right now um, because for so many reasons. But Pegasus has the word gas hidden in the word Pegasus. And the gas is a major component of the story right now. As the truckers have been, uh, have been refused access to gas and the masses, the masses have brought the gas to the truckers. And uh, Jupiter, number four, Jupiter is the gas giant. This is absolutely amazing to me, uh, but I just want to point out in my uh, last week's video of the story of uh, Perseus, it was in the moment that he cut the head off of Medusa, Med-USA, Medusa. He cut the head off of Medusa, and Pegasus was born out of the, uh, out of the neck of Medusa. And uh, the sim the symbolic significance of that uh, goes right into Velikovsky's work and his idea that the gas giant of Jupiter uh, is was born out of a conflagration uh, where the where Saturn was removed from the tower from the top of the tower of the ancient uh, cosmological construct. If anybody doesn't know Velikovsky, that won't make much sense. But Saturn was at the top of a columnal pillar alignment of the planets. And when it was removed from that top, then the, uh, the sheath, the gas sheath of the Purple Dawn was removed, signifying the moment where Adam and Eve realized they were naked. This is the original trauma, the birth trauma of the collective. And it is immortalized in our stories in so many ways. So the cutting off of Medusa's head and the birthing of Pegasus corresponds very much with Saturn being removed from that construct and Jupiter becoming the, uh, the gas giant of the solar system. Uh, so all of this is coming to me <laughs> uh, all at once, just this morning. It's very intense, very heavy. Uh, there is a lot to say, a lot to see, and a lot to share. Uh, but I just wanted to bring all of these revelations forward and uh, bring them into everybody's mind. There's much to think about, much to consider as we are moving out of this point. We are moving out of that Jupiter, Pegasus, the gas crisis. Also, I need to point out that every year for, for decades now, we have had in the wintertime, in the season of coins... In the season of Pentacles, we have had people having a gas crisis to heat their home. And so they uh, last year we had Texas, which Texas falls under Aquarius in my territories. Texas had a gas crisis, so they had to pay gas to the U.S., pay gases. Last year, the Texas uh, crisis... <laughs> corresponded perfectly with this moment that we are in right now. We are at one year away from the gas crisis of Pegasus of Texas paying the gas to the U.S. Okay, uh, there's so much to say, it's amazing. So as we move forward, we are going to actually see Pisces. Uh, this is a Fomal Halt. This is one of the uh, four royal stars. Fomal, Fomal Halt is the fish that is catching the uh, the spilling over of water from the uh, water bearer who is down here in this uh, this section of the sky. Um, so as we move forward, Fomal Halt will come into play in a major way. This is representing Saturn. Um, and I'm not sure what to say. Uh, uh, you know, there will be a, a flood. You can think of it as a flood, an information flood. Um, that will be a lot to take in. Uh, I think of the fact that the government just created 10,000 memes to flood the internet with 
uh, hateful uh, information uh, so that they can, you can think of this as a phishing operation, that they will see who takes on these hateful memes, who can, who circulates the hateful memes so that they can uh, get a sense of where your, your mentality is at. There will be much phishing for men uh, going forward as they, uh, as they test the waters and see uh, where you stand. And if you attach to the memes that they just put out, that will be put towards your credit score. <laughs> um, but in the story of Perseus, I just want to put this forward because it will be significant. The next part of the story of Perseus, after he cuts Medusa's head off, he goes up against a giant, uh, Atlas. And he and Atlas have a moment of negotiation. And Atlas refuses to, to yield to Perseus. And so Perseus turns Atlas to stone. Uh, and uh, thereby the firmament gets frozen in place. This represents the winter season where everything becomes frozen, where the trees and the ground and the earth, all things are covered in snow. Um, that is uh, beautiful and poetic from the story. Uh, but you can think that there may be some freezing of assets coming forward. Uh, maybe some Bitcoin, some virtual crypto money might get frozen in virtual space. From that point, uh, he moves forward and he sees Andromeda tied up on the shore and she is about to be sacrificed. Her family is standing by watching. Her family actually put her out there as a sacrifice. And Perseus, again, uh, he slays the dragon. He actually does it by hand. He does, not, uh, he does not use the Medusa head. He has to do it the hard way. As we are in the winter, there's a lot of work. You're going to have to till that soil, Snake Jones. <laughs> uh, get the, you know, get that work in. So, uh, I want to point out. And then he rescues Andromeda after he negotiates the terms with her family. So this tells us that uh, Perseus is not doing this out of the goodness of his heart. He first, uh, uh, he negotiates a dowry. Let's just say that. Um, and once he, once he, uh, saves her, the parents offer him their kingdom and he refuses the kingdom. He says, no, thanks. I don't want the kingdom. I'll just take wifey here and, uh, and, um, and she's coming with me and I'm taking her home, uh, to go save my mother. Uh, then a jealous relative tries to ref uh, refute the wedding and that's when he busts out his Medusa head and turns the jealous relative to stone. Um, and I just want to point out that as we move into the next month, we will be looking at the a mu mutable X. And this is X on the dotted line. This is a negotiation. This is the terms of service. Uh, we will be looking at quite a bit of negotiations. You can think of Russia. You can think there will be treaties. Uh, you can think about... Uh, taking what you want and leaving the rest, these will all be played out on the world stage and probably in your life in a major way. I would say this is a good time to, uh, to consider the significance of um, conditional acceptance. Uh, there's much to say about that, but that's all I'm going to put out. Also, I want to put out that Andromeda has the Rome. Androm... And Rome Day, <laughs> Andromeda. Um, it is also, this is St. Andrew's Cross, the uh, androgynous, mutable X. We have been seeing so much around this X lately, it's amazing. So I would say that if they were going to launch a long-term spell, it would be in the upcoming month. Uh, here in the month of Pisces. Here we have Triangulum. Uh, many secret societies venerate the triangle in a major way. Uh, here we have 7-8. Everybody remembers my, uh, my decode on Mercury being represented by the 7 to the 8. So we are moving forward in the next month into the grand macro 
representation of the seven and the eight as we come full circle on the year, y'all. I think that's all I had to say. I just needed to get it all out. I had to empty my cup because uh, <laughs> because my brain was overfilling with information and appreciation for what everybody is helping me bring forward in the grand code of uh, on earth as it is in heaven. Much love and respect, y'all. I hope you dig it. Give me some comments. Give me some feedback. Let me know what this inspires in you. All right. Strength.